I hope this answers some of the questions relating to the last video, which was talking about um, ownership, trust, and the value of your items where people just do not value them at all. Well, in this video, I want to give a few examples of what I'm talking about. First thing is, you have different people within a family. You have what I mean, I imagine it as a triangle, because you sit at the top being the breadwinner, and then it sort of goes down by different, like, like with me, it's my wife and kids, then my father and mother-in-law, then my wife's siblings, and, you know, it sort of goes down like that. But down, once you get past, <laughs> past a certain level, that's where you start to run into trouble. Now, I know some people even get it from their closest in-laws um, but in our family it's sort of halfway and further um, we've had people charge us for rent on stuff um, and then find out uh, we made an agreement to do something and they've kept the money um, but when it all become public it's when the family split in two um, I brought that up before and this is what I'm saying when I say family, there's two types. There's what I call the close family, which is my mother-in-law, father-in-law, my sister-in-law, brother-in-law, and they're associated, um, you know, their partners. Uh, sort of beyond that, you start it, hit it, the problems. Uh, for example, got an idiot cousin that we, we assume was stealing from our store. Um that sort of thing goes on uh, you get people that do it because you've got more than them that's all it is they don't want to work they could work I mean I know somebody who is exactly like that where they see it as okay to steal from you because it's your fault they're poor um, when they don't work I mean I can't, I can't really expand it out too much because people know who I'm talking about um, but they spend the money on the wrong things they'll spend it on motorbike parts instead of their malnutritioned child things like that same as you'll get people to spend it on alcohol instead of the children because when I used to do the construction what I do is I put a free beer tap because beer doesn't cost a lot but it forces people if you've got free beer then you should be taking your money home and that's that's my logic behind it uh, because I'm more concerned about their pay packets going to their wife and kids for the food and education etc that I give them a free beer, beer tab and I'll tell you now after three days and having to work the following day it burns off quite quickly the, the novelty they don't want it every day because you know, you know, it's like if you have get a hangover, then back to work, then have some more beer in the afternoon. By the third day, you sort of think, I don't want any more beer. I really don't. <laughs> so that's my logic on it. Um, where people tinker with a motorbike is normally kids, but I've also had adults doing it. And I don't know why. I really don't. I don't know what the logic is. But they do. They just, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but the problem we've got is the motorbike, when it's out, is on under a carport. And we have a accessible compound because there's, there's another house next to ours. But also, we let the neighbours go to the back. There's, there's several houses behind us. Uh, we could actually lock our gates, but they would be landlocked. So, um, but... It's not them that do it. It's when people visit them and stuff like that. It's just annoying because they they wouldn't touch it. They know it's not to their advantage to touch it where we could just go, okay, padlock on the gate, job done, you can't get in or out of your house. So stuff like that, people do it. And the motorbike tinkering is more to do with they're just tinkering. It's not malicious or anything else. It's because it's a nice shiny motorbike. Um... It's 220 cc, where most of the ones in the neighbourhood are about 125, and it's a more sporty looking bike than uh, an underbone, which is what most people have. Is where the 
the engine and everything sort of sits under it. It's under the frame. It's why they call it an underbone. It's just the design of it. Um, so it's a different bike. As such, it draws attention. Uh, but also, there's just no sense of ownership. That's what I was saying about you could have a GP, which we've had, and we've parked it in the church car park, come back, and someone's been asleep in it. And that's normal. People just do this stuff. What, there's no, it, it is only sense of ownership because they're not, um, they're not sort of like, oh, oh, I can't believe I fell asleep in your GP. They're more like, oh, okay, you're back now. <laughs> it's that sort of, they're, they're not, because they're not doing any damage, they're just like, oh, that's comfortable, I'll sit there. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. And that's what I was saying with, uh, with the the, genu uh, the um, welding machine. There is no logic to it. We, w this is why I say to people, there's Filipino logic and then there's Western logic. They're completely different. When I lent it out, it wasn't to the sun. It wasn't to the um, workers or whatever. Because I would never lend it out to workers. The only workers that use it on mine are ones I can visually see. It was rented out to somebody in the extended family, which rarely I do, but the guy I actually trust, bizarrely. Um, but I didn't know he was lending it to his son, because if I did, I wouldn't have lent it out. Um, because what I'm, this is why I was saying I tr the trust for that guy it's worth more than the welding machine. Now, some people may say, well, yeah, but it's his fault. But it was nothing to do with him. Um, although it's come through him, I don't know the conversations between X, Y, Z. Because all I heard is he wanted to borrow it. That was it. Bear in mind, I was sat in the UK. And the conversations between different people have obviously very likely changed. Because what happens is, is the workers need a welder. So they ask the son. The son then asks his dad. His dad then asks my father-in-law. So he then would say, X has asked to borrow it. He wouldn't say his son. He wouldn't say the, the workers. It's sort of like missed several people out of the chain. Because if that guy had asked to borrow it, I would have lent it. And I did. But if he turned around and says, well, his workers want to borrow it, the answer would have been no. So, from that perspective, it's a lesson learned. Um, that's why I ask these days, if anybody's doing something or even wants to try and borrow something, who is exactly going to be using it? Now, there is issues within every family as well. There's a, there's a divide down the middle with ours. Um, after some issues relating to charging, being charged for things that didn't exist, um, some issues to for some developments, to the point that the family just went, we we basically walked away from it all, and several key members of the family did exactly the same, because you got to remember RFWs are supporting a lot of stuff that goes on in these families. And a lot of FWs are milked dry. You know, they have no money for their own families, no, nothing to finish their own properties, because they've got the, certain individuals that are just taking whatever they can get. And they pay, play on the debt of gratitude, and they'll just take everything they can. Um, when we created this, well, we didn't create a rift, they did, they, because they were complaining over, bizarrely, a, a septic tank. Because uh, they want, because see, the thing is, people want an involvement in everything you're doing because then they're getting something out of it, whether it's financial, trying to take control of it, whatever. They they have to have control of it. So when you remove that, they don't like it because it sort of disconnects their little bit of power. Um, so these little things went on. And they didn't like it. They created a big disruption with it. But then we just said, fine, we'll move on, you know. So we did. Um, we ditched the ancestral home. I stripped it bare, even took the sink out. Because um, we'd invested a lot of money in there to renovate it. 
And then we had some problems with extended family, wanting 5,000 a month rent on it. And then we said, oh yeah, we'll renovate the, uh, the main house. And then you start to get into the family politics that have been ongoing for the last 50 years or whatever. Um, and that's when you start seeing where these rivalries are, which is what somebody was bringing up on another post, why people don't get on. It's because there's stuff in the past they haven't told you. Because there's issues that are your issues, and then there's what they call family issues. Family issues are internal between siblings, between uncles, between aunts. Those things have been going on historically for ages. And you may not be aware of it, but you're thinking, why do they hate each other? And in the background, there is something. Um, a lot of it's land. Land issues are a big thing in the Philippines. Um, one of our nannies inherited some land from her grandfather. We, the grandfather died, quite a lot of land actually. And her uncles were actually shooting at each other over their bits of land. Literally, with guns, shooting at each other. Um, to the point somebody actually sustained some uh, gunshot wounds and had to go to hospital. And the other one was uh, detained. So those things do go on in the Philippines, the old land feud things, but it's not outside the family, it's normally in the family because is whoever inherits the land is the uh, the sort of kingpin in some ways. Um, but our, our thing, we have a family divide and we're quite happy not to go back to the way it was because um, everyone's happier on our side. Um, because it's not just us, by the way. We've actually had some uncles and stuff stay stay on our side because they were getting milked like no tomorrow as OFWs. To the point that they would never finish their own houses and stuff because they're paying for other people's, you know, because they're, they're paying for other relatives and stuff. So that, that way, they've just turned around and pushed it to one side because they're sort of like, right, well, enough's enough because you, you're sustainable yourself, etc. You don't need our money anymore. Stop taking it. You know, the, but like I'm saying, I'm trying not to get into those issues within our own family because it, I get this. You know, not not for my in-laws, but the people we argue with will start backbiting like no tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but that those sort of things go on, and that's why, like I said, you'll you'll see people that don't get on. You'll see people that won't go in other people's houses and things like that. There is stuff in the past. There's stuff that is so trivial that has gone on for 20 years that you're not aware of yet. But if you ask, if you say, like, why does your uncle never go in your aunt's house or whatever, your wife will probably tell you, or your, your partner will. She says, oh, they don't like each other. And then you say, well, what caused it? Because you've got to prize. You, you can't just go, oh, okay, then. You've got to go... But what caused it then? Why don't they like each other anymore? And then you find out, oh yeah, well, when my my aunt paid for his college and then he decided he didn't want to do it, he wanted to become a, a farmer or something. And then it, it's been ongoing for 20 years because now they look down on him because he never finished his schooling and blah, blah, blah. And there's these things that go on, but you've got to like prize it out of people. Now, the other point I want to make here is I have no issues at all with my direct family, my close family. We all look after each other. I mean, it's like yesterday. I needed some stuff doing in the Philippines. My sister-in-law traveled down to our compound to do the stuff for us. Um, don't have to pay her. Don't have to do anything. It's just like ask and it's done. Um, We've upgraded some of the apartment stuff because uh, Steve was there recently and he noticed some of the stuff was, wasn't was where it should be. So uh, basically I, I got it got it all upgraded again. Um, so with that, they, they just do it. They, there's no, we don't pay each other, but I know other people that do. I know somebody who pays their own brother to do stuff. I'm not talking brother-in-law, I'm talking brother. Because the brother is, oh, he's so hard, he, he doesn't work, he can't get it. Yes, he can get a job, he's just lazy. He's just lazy, he wants to sit around your house and be your driver. Because he gets paid to sit around your house. 
The reason it doesn't work is because you're sending money every month. Um, yeah, so I lost change. But the there's all stuff that goes on in these families. Um, ours isn't too bad these days, to be honest. And like I said, the the issue relating to the motorbike, I just move it. When it's in the carport, people tinker. People don't tinker with a Pajero because it's locked. People tinker with a motorbike because you've got exposed sides on it. And like I said, I don't think they intensely do it. What it is is they're poking, they're looking, it's seeing, oh, look, there's a big engine in there. Oh, what's this do? And they turn my bloody fuel valve off. Um, so you pull away and... Either it won't start or you'll get the other thing where if it did run for a little bit, if there was some in the pipe, there's a risk that if you did pull out into the main road, it would cut out because the fuel would stop, which is annoying. Um, but not really with mallets. They're not looking to... It's not premeditated or something. It's just what people do. It's, I know in the West it's very different. Or Well, I say that. Today is market day here. And I would hazard the guess that the people that will be wandering up our street are Romanian gippos. Um, because they try every door handle as they go past on the cars to try and break in on them. Um, we, we watched them last week. I mean, I'm talking about five or six people pulling every door handle to see if any of the cars opened. Now, the police won't do anything because no crime's actually being committed yet. Um, if they got in and stole this car stereo, a crime's being committed. Until then, they won't do a stitch. It's the same people that will do this um, cup game, you know, with the three cups. Same criminals. Um, I say criminals because they are. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.